Good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to this session uh, that is going to discuss on the importance of prioritizing water sanitation and hygiene in the small and medium town settings. Uh, the, 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 uh, I'm not going to go into the details of what this session is going to deal about, but just to introduce uh, the moderator, and the moderator will uh, take uh, forward from here. So uh, I'm Raman from WaterAid India, and on behalf of WaterAid, I welcome the moderator and all the esteemed uh, panel panelists, uh, uh, you know, top uh, administrators to uh, you know researchers to uh, you know policy advocates together. It's a very very important uh, group that is sitting together. Uh, so I introduce uh, uh, Shubhagatu Das Gupta as the moderator for this session. Uh, he is a senior fellow with the Center for Policy Research. And uh, in, in designing this session and also to take this forward, Subhagato will be playing, uh, has been playing and will be playing a, a critical role. And uh, he is, uh, you know, a known person uh, across the, you know, audience whosoever is discussing about uh, urban development in India. So I need not to really, you know, introduce him, but he is uh, by profession also an architect and also architect of the uh, Skiffy program uh, in the CPR, uh, Center for Policy Research, uh, scaling uh, uh, city institutions uh, for sanitation uh, <clears throat> in India. And he has been with uh, DFID of the Government of UK, World Bank, and uh, IDFC of the HATCO, uh, and uh, has worked extensively in Asia and Africa. So uh, 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 the understanding about the urban realities and uh, the need of focusing on the emerging towns uh, we we cannot have a better moderator than him. So I welcome Chubagato to take over as the moderator of this session and to uh, further introduce all the panelists that we have. In absence of time, I am not uh, introducing the uh, panelists here. That uh, moderator uh, will take over from me. Over to you, Chubagato. Thank you so much for uh, uh, agreeing to moderate this session. Thank you very much, Raman. Uh, 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 my thanks to WaterAid and to uh, uh, the Nudge Foundation to to kind of give focus on this uh, issue of small and medium towns, its infrastructure and services and financing of it. It's been a long neglected area, uh, but in India's long uh, trajectory of urbanization, given that South Asia is the leading um, the geography in which urbanization is currently happening, it's an area that needs a lot more attention than it gets. So, uh, so I welcome this um, uh, uh, this meeting. Uh, I I will uh, roughly take you through uh, and introduce the uh, this, uh, the presenters and the panelists. Uh, uh, Miss Amulya Miriala uh, is a uh, policy officer at WaterAid. Uh, she has an environment background and is interested in uh, policy and research. Uh, she'll be making a presentation out of some studies they've been doing. Uh, Mr. Uh, G. Mathiwatnan uh, is Principal Secretary uh, from the Housing and Urban Development Department, Government of Orissa, and has been championing a whole set of models which are getting national and international uh, uh, acclaim uh, for its ingenuity and its focus uh, on small and medium towns. Um, uh, we are delighted to also have uh, Mr. Deepak Sanan with us, uh, who currently uh, spends time between CPR, uh, IIHS, and NCAER uh, as senior fellows. Uh, but uh, in the past, has been principal secretary in, uh, of finance in Himachal Pradesh and additional chief uh, retired as his additional chief secretary. He is one of the foremost uh, public finance. Uh, water and sanitation interface persons. Uh, so we are delighted that we have with uh, us with him today. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Nasser Ahmed uh, for, is the director of uh, the Jaipur-based policy research uh, think tank called Budget Analysis Research Center and has done extensive work on gender mainstreaming and um, especially in the mining industry uh, and has done some studies with WaterAid recently. Uh, Dr. Manvita Baradi um, is a dean at uh, the Center for Environment Planning and Technology and also the director of the Urban Management Center and has more than 25 years of experience uh, working in cities. Uh, she will also be part of the panel. And, and Ramakrishna uh, Paul, uh, who is an engineer and has been working with uh, Athena Inform uh, Informat uh, Inform 
informatics, no, info, uh, informics, uh, and uh, has been uh, a part of uh, the fecal sludge movement in India, so to say, uh, and uh, has uh, worked with CDD designing some of these fecal sludge uh, treatment plants in the past. Uh, the idea is that we will spend uh, the first half an hour going through presentations, and then we will have a panel discussion which will focus uh, from service delivery onto financing service delivery. Uh, and here I would like to start by uh, asking uh, uh, Ms. Amulya uh, to share her presentation, please. Over to you, Amulya. Thank you so much, Bhagato. Um, thank you, everyone, for being here. And uh, a very warm welcome to all the panelists and the participants who are here today. I'm going to share with you all a quick uh, you know, uh, background of a, a few studies that WaterAid has conducted around small and medium towns wash situation around service delivery as well as their funds flow architecture and financing as well. Um, I will try and keep it as contact as uh, precise as possible so we could allow more time for the panel discussion. Uh, yeah. So for the, uh, due to the time limitation, I'm just going to give you a quick background of the findings and learnings from three studies. Uh, one was conducted in 2019 in six different small and medium towns across India, um, which sort of bro uh, broadly represent all the small and medium towns, uh, most small and medium towns across India to understand the wash service delivery across these towns. So to provide policy recommendations for uh, emerging towns. And then recently in March 2021, Water Aid India has commissioned a study. Uh, and uh, one of our panelists here, Mr. Nassar Ahmad from Bark Jaipur, uh, was the one who has authored this particular uh, paper as well. So I'm going to give you quick insights on funds flow architecture and financing. Uh, the insights that he has found for six states that we have studied in. And I'm also broadly going to give you a quick uh, background of a study that uh, Water Aid South Asia has uh, commissioned to Atish, uh, Athena Infonomics, uh, whose representative, uh, Mr. Ram Krishna Paul, who is a senior consultant there, is here today. So they are going to discuss further about this. Um, so to start off, one of the quick findings from this study that was conducted in 2019 had told us that uh, very few of the studied small and medium towns at that time had access to household level piped water supply, whilst majority of the uh, of them had access to safe drinking water from different sources, so the sources within their uh, household premises, especially uh, piped water was very limited. One of the exceptional cases in this was that of Palamanair, which had 86.3% of the studied households uh, covered with piped water supply. Although these 86.3% households had piped water supply, the limitation here was that water was only provided every alternate day. So here is a clear indication that despite having the infrastructure in place, the delivery was not very clearly in place by the municipality set up there. Um, going on, uh, we also looked at uh, um, you know, the kinds of populations who had access to safe drinking water and those who did not. And uh, there was a very clear contrast in this, and it was that uh, it was the population who is below the poverty line, 59.5% of the population below the poverty line of all the 1,200 studied uh, participants did not have access to safe water within their household premises. That means they went outside of their household using tap posts or uh, uh, dug wells that are uh, outside their household premises. And also many of the marginalized communities and the um, you know, uh, SCST and uh, uh, other marginalized populations were amongst those who comprised of 80% of the population who did not have access to safe water within the household premises. This seemed like a very key finding that needs to be focused on uh, as, uh, you know, as a finding of Jaljeevan Mission Urban that is going to be in place. And also when we looked at the water quality issue, Almost all the samples indicated of at least one or the other water quality uh, uh, contaminant that is above the acceptable limit. Um, and uh, majority of it was from the uh, uh, total coliforms and fecal coliforms and also the hardness associated to it. 
and then it was also found that 84.6% of the household had access to uh, improved sanitation this was uh, right after swachh bharat missions initiative so uh, it was very evident that these 84.6% of the households uh, sanitation infrastructure can be associated to that and of these 84.6% households 49.4% indicated that all they had uh, se uh, septic tanks in their households uh, but when asked about whether or not they are aware of how often they get their septic tanks em uh, emptied almost all of them indicated that they are unaware of the fact that either septic tanks need to be emptied or that they did not have a person who who uh, person or establishment in their town who could empty their septic tanks and the remaining indicated that they had other simple holding structures or no structures at all and then moving on to based on the findings of this study we sort of thought of uh, uh, you know uh, understanding a little bit more about the financing and the funds flow architecture that goes into the uh, wash uh, infrastructure that is set up in small and medium towns uh, across the country so as we all are aware there are different sources of incomes for uh, the urban local bodies uh, starting from their own sources as tax um uh, and revenue and non revenue sources and then there are state and central uh, funded grants that come in and also there are grants in aid as well as loans available to them and uh, one of the uh, major findings from our study was that a lot of, of over 90% of the ulb's budget often comes from say, state and central finance schemes or the grants that are available in place and that the revenue coming from within these small towns are very limited and when looked at uh, the percentage of the funding from uh, different sources it is very evident from this particular graph uh, as an example we have taken uh, the uh, funds availability uh, that we have for the uttar pradesh from the years 2015 2016 and 16 17 and there is a clear indication that majority of the uh, uh, self sourced income is seen in uh, municipal corporations which are again bigger cities metropolises or like you know cities with high populations and high income levels as well but when we go on to municipal councils it is significantly lower and it is almost non existent for nagar panchayats these and uh, majority of uh, which are uh, newly converting uh, urban bodies from local uh, from rural areas so it is uh, very clear that uh, the revenues that are available uh, self revenues available for small towns is quite limited and then when looked at the uh, percentage allocation for urban wash when compared to uh, the total urban development that is available uh, from the 2020 and 21 budget uh, we have found that it is the uh, the percentage uh, difference between the total urban development versus the funds that are uh, um, all, um, allocated towards wash services is significantly low it was in uttar pradesh that we have seen a significantly higher amount but for the rest of the uh, for madhya pradesh excuse me for madhya pradesh it was significantly higher but for the remaining states it was found to be extremely low and then moving on to uh, within these urban local bodies to look at small and medium towns specifically for the small and medium towns wherein we have compared between the wash allocation uh, the allocations for wash infrastructure and financing versus the total urban development allocations it is quite negligent almost coming up to a maximum of 6% for one of these states but uh, almost negligible for the others and then also i would like to give a quick run through of a study that athena infonomics has conducted um and ram would uh, then take on th take this further and give you some more insights on this and some of their key learnings um it was the objective of this particular study was basically whilst the first two studies were generally to understand what is the situation like for small and medium towns uh, in order to generalize their situation this particular study tried to look at uh best practices selected municipalities which have best sanitation practices in place to try and understand what 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 is it that they did right what worked what did not work and how is the san sanitation financing looking like in these villages and how can this be used as a model for other places as well um so some of the key challenges that were identified for this particular study uh which included six towns two from india two from bangladesh and two from nepal 
for india's context as uh, seen by our particular study earlier it proves the same that there is a heavy reliance on intergovernmental transfers especially those from the state and center allocated uh, uh, grants and the finance commission budgets that are in place um going on a little bit to give you a little context about what what are the two towns that uh, uh, this particular study looked into those were denkanal and sirsela sirsela from telangana and denkanal from orissa and these are uh, two uh, the two towns wherein we have uh, uh, fstps in place one is a 27 kld fstp and the other is a 18 kld fstp both of which are community uh, uh, operated or community owned in in one way or the other uh, while uh, a, a component of them is either privately managed or the municipality managed there is community ownership component in it especially by the engagement of self help groups in this so whatever waste that is being produced within these towns especially the uh, solid waste or the fecal waste everything the compostable the organic waste is treated by the self help groups um as at the composting facilities and then the remaining uh, is sent to either landfills if they are general solid waste or then sent to the fstps after the on site treatment from emptying systems um but even from these towns it was clearly found that whilst uh, you know they had uh, uh, because of the community participation they were able to uh they are, they are able to manage their operational expenditure their capital expenditure still comes from other sources of funds so that is a clear indication that there is still a lot of scope for improvement for small and medium towns in order for them to be self reliable and also it also clearly states the role of self help group employee uh, persons as well as the community resource persons in ensuring the safety and the sustainable operation of these uh, fstps as well as how these could provide uh employment opportunities to the youth and women in these locations as well um and also the importance of behavior change and awareness related campaigns that need to be taken up by small and medium towns was also very clearly identified by this small uh, by this particular study but there are still very clear indications that uh, um wash uh, services delivery as well as financing are uh, need a lot of improvement as we proceed further um i would like to stop this here and uh, proceed uh, take it for next to follow to take this forward thank you uh, thank you very much amulya for uh, presenting the uh, the key findings from your studies uh, i'm uh, we are now eagerly waiting to hear from uh, mr mathiwatan uh, about uh, how uh, the orissa government has been transforming the water and sanitation sector across all its cities Uh, and with a special reference to the most immediate successful project uh, thank you uh, over to you mr mathiwatnam thank you sir thanks for the opportunity good afternoon to all is the presentation visible yes it's fine sir ha sir good afternoon to all sir so i will be talking about uh, the uh, odisha's experience urban odisha's experience in providing uh, uh, drinking water safe and clean drinking water to the cities and uh, uh, ensuring sanitation security in the towns giving a context of odisha odisha has 114 cities <clears throat> out of which except the state capital bhubaneswar which has a population of say 1 million just touching 1 million all other 113 uh, uh, urban local bodies are small and medium we have uh, five corporations 46 municipalities and 61 small nacs predominantly it is uh, smaller uh, towns and uh, <clears throat> these slides give you the latest uh, of our accomplishment puri has become india's first city to achieve drink from tap quality is 10500 compliance uh, for the entire city with 100% connections with 100% metering 100% revenue collection and uh, with the smart water management system deployed uh, we have an iot based real time monitoring of water supply quantity quality surveillance system and uh, bhubaneswar has become the india's first uh, million plus city to achieve 100% house connections uh, in uh, october 2020 almost one year ago along with that we have 15 more towns which have achieved the 100% tap water connection in all houses 
so this is the current uh, uh, state of our water supply uh, position and we have a target of uh, achieving 100% house connections in the remaining towns by march 2022 and uh, the next level of drink from tap quality adhering to is 10500 in uh, about 17 towns including bhuneshwar city by october 2nd 2023 so before we reached that stage <clears throat> where did we start we started our journey sometime in 2016 17 our journey has been very uh, challenging uh, challenging like any other cities in the country we also faced we used to face lots of issues especially during summer inadequacy uh, of supply water supply not uh, reaching every parts of the city not getting water daily all issues were there people uh, blocking the road uh, resorting to strike uh, pro organizing protest all those things were very common issues raised in the assembly media and we also used to face quality related issues water bond diseases jaundice uh, attacks and then uh, then uh, the water the uh, uh, this diarrhea mass admission in the hospitals fatalities we used to get especially during the summers the situation in 2016 17 was something like this there was a deficit of about more than 100 uh, million liters daily in terms of quality quantity and uh, the per capita supply we were about on an average we were supplying only about 60 lpcd as against the aspiration level of 135 and when it comes to the pipe network only uh, about 40% of the city was covered with the pipe network the remaining 60% of the areas especially the uh, the low income settlements slums they were all they were not having pipe network they were fed by the hand pump tubel or the syntax tanks fed by the water tankers we had issues relating to the pipe network coverage the quantity of supply the quality issues were there Incon inconsistent water supply was given and issues relating to continuity of the service and within the cities also some cities were getting very high water supply like bhuneshwar sambalpur raudkela corporations sambal so bhuneshwar on an average was getting about 350 lpcd whereas on the left hand side you will find in the uh, chart there were several uh, uh, the smaller urban local bodies were getting 11 liters 16 liters 17 liters that to on an average 50% of the areas were not covered with the pipe network so this is where we started in 2016 17 and uh, we had a policy urban water policy of 2013 which envisages uh, you know three phase development of the water supply sector and uh, targeting to achieve 100% coverage by the year 2027 so when we started in 2016 we thought that it is too long to wait for that stage and we need to advance it so we decided to rewrite the water policy even before it was uh, you know put into action and with the uh, consent of honorable chief minister we took up a massive program called basuda pipe uh, uh, targeting universal coverage of tap water supply in every household in every city uh, not leaving behind any house we launched in 20th, 20th october 2017 from katak about 555 projects have been launched on that day and uh, while launching we also took up a lot of policy uh, 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 reforms we first point is that we made uh, you know uh, uh, right to water this is the underlying principle of our policy everyone has a living in the urban area has a right to tap water and the house connections were the problems we thought that house connection should be executed by phu as a public work it should not be left to the public so that was declared as a public work and the households were freed from obtaining the road cutting permission paying a hefty 10000 15000 rupees as the road cutting charge to the municipality and then the connection charges we introduced an installment system we engaged the community in a very uh, uh, you know extensive way and the house connection norms were relaxed indemnity bond was introduced because there were requirements of land occupant ownership lease deed for occupancy we said that nothing is required just given indemnity bond that pho will not be responsible for any litigation we waived we waived the connection fee for the urban poor and 
Amrut was under implementation as well as the state program. We said that we will provide two taps at the government cost to the urban poor and the slums and covering all slums and all uncovered areas in the entire city. And we, uh, we, we enlisted about 900 and some uh, uh, projects covering all the 114 urban local bodies. And we gave a composite administrative approval, not single, one order giving approval for all the works. Coming to the financing of these projects, every year the state used to spend about 150 to 100, 200 crore. But in 2016-17, when we drew up this program, we said that we need a massive investment. For the next three years, on a composite basis, we mobilized about 3,800 crores of rupees. And that too, the state from the state, we mobilized only 1,200. That means which is less than one third of the total uh, funding requirement. The remaining have been mobilized through the through leveraging from various schemes like Amrut, the District Mineral Fund, uh, the uh, Odisha Mineral Bearing Area Development Corporation, UIDS SMT, the Deposit Work, MLA led, MP led, all possible CSR, all possible sources have been tapped and we mobilized about 3,800 crore and uh, rolled out more than 900 projects and we rolled out uh, we took up these in 2019 in a uh, sorry 2017 october we rolled out by 2019 we achieved about uh, you know from this this chart would uh, tell you what we have delivered about 224 mld per day uh, 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 source augmentation has been done 121 water treatment plants have been completed with 149 mld uh, uh, capacity addition and about more than 66,000 kilometers of new network, mostly the distribution network have been added and the water deficient ULBs have been have gone to water sufficient. Then uh, all areas have been covered, all wards partially covered, not covered, all were covered with the pipe networks. When we focused on the uh, network uh, coverage, we also focused on the quality. We set up nine a state of art testing laboratory under PPP mode covering the entire state in various places. <clears throat> and we also introduced the Jalsati that without community engagement, community participation, this kind of massive uh, water supply program cannot be cannot become success. So we introduced the Jalsati program, which is, uh, you know, uh, uh, the women's self-help group members have been identified, active members, dynamic members have been roped in as part of our water supply program and uh, they acted as a bridge between the water supply authorities and, and the consumers and uh, they were interested with the various activities like reading water meter, generating bill, collecting water charges and also doing water quality testing in the, in the, in the field and they were they are facilitating the consumer complaint redressal. For every activity they are paid incentives and honorariums and we have right now more than about 400 Jalsatis in various cities and in 2000. 14, 15, we had only 3 lakh 10,000 household connections. When we started in 2016, 17, it was less than to, uh, uh, less than 4.5 lakh. And now we have reached currently we are in 8 lakh 89,669 connections. We have a target by when we achieve 100%, we would be reaching about 12 lakh 17,000 house connections. As I said, Bhuvaneshwar has become the India's first million plus city to achieve 100% house connection and 15 more towns have reached that and uh, we have a target of achieving this in all cities by March 2022. So the impact of uh, 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 providing access to clean and safe drinking water at the premises level you can see this is the data we have got from the IS IDSP integrated disease surveillance program of the health and family welfare department of government of Odisha you will find in 2014 on the top you will find the reported jaundice cases in the hospitals. This is the data we collected from the hospitals from all the from the entire state. 2014, you will find 3,608 cases with the 29 fatalities where we have reached. Now it's about 26 with zero fatality. Fatality it has reached zero from 2016 onwards. In the down, the, the, the bottom one is the diarrhea outbreaks in the cities. So there were 3,832 cases incidences in 2014 with 30 fatalities. Now we could reach zero fatality with 100, just 146 cases uh, uh, last year. Having achieved, having accomplished that and having reached this, then in 2019, we decided that we should move forward to a higher orbit 
why not we focus on quality when we talk about the quality why not we focus on the uh, is quality so we thought that we will provide drink from tap quality complying with is 10500 so we took up this drink from tap mission rolled out in august 2019 on a pirate basis we took bhuvaneshwar city as well as puri city 12 zones were identified we implemented that and by october 13th 2020 we successfully completed uh, uh, the execution in all 12 pilot zones and dedicate that and then rolled out the drink from tap as a mission program for the entire state starting with uh, uh, puri and bhuvaneshwar to upscale to the entire city and uh, happy to and in the pilot itself we have covered salia sahi the largest slum in odisha with 57500 population that has been covered successfully in the pilot phase itself and on uh, uh, July 26th, uh, we have completed the Puri city also. So these are the various components of the Drink from Tap mission. We have IVRS based 24 by 7 customer care, lab on wheels, quick response teams uh, to, 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 to uh, give public confidence, to create trust of the people on the quality. We display the real time water quality in the LED display boards in the cities. We have adopted SWAT, smart water management based on IoT. And we also take up uh, the uh, pure for sure campaign to enhance the public confidence on the public and government water. And we have also set up a new academy called Odisha Water Academy to create trained workforce in the water supply, uh, drinking water and wastewater sector. We have started giving training for the plumbers and uh, other 24 seven operators. Training programs are being successfully done for the both the drinking water as well as for the wastewater management and uh, along with this we have also uh, taken up the metering puri as i said to you as i said is 100 percent metered all our pilot zones are 100 percent metered and uh, now more than 120,000 households are metered metering is taken up on a massive scale in all the corporations area out of the the we started the metering program only last year and uh, right now we have about more than uh, 8 lakh connections we have a program of uh, uh, you know achieving 100% metering by 2023 so this is a drink from tap mission we are upscaling in 17 cities as i said with 100 crores investment we have a target of achieving uh, uh, completing this in 17 cities by or um, by before october 2nd 2023 so this is our uh, journey in the drinking water we started from the deficit Poor quality, we have reached drink from tap quality in few towns and trying to reach the entire uh, state. Coming to the sanitation, we have I, have, I am covering both liquid waste as well as solid waste. The approach Odisha has followed in the sanitation is decentralized and the community partnership. The mission, the mission Sakti members, the, the women self help group members, transgender groups, and the rack pickers group are our partners or the representatives of the community. And this is the this is the uh, this is the approach we have follow, we are following in the solid waste management, house to house collection, hundred percent segregated, uh, door to door collection of waste, taking it to a well center. Well center we have a uh, the micro composting center and a material recovery facility together. It's a co-located facility. It's called well center, where the wet waste segregated wet waste is converted to uh, the organic manure. We call it as a mokato in Odia. And the dry waste is segregated and then sold as uh, sold to the uh, recyclers uh, and the non-recyclable are sent to the cement factory and the boiler plants for using as co for the co-processing. And uh, in 2020, last year only, we moved from the centralized solid waste management to decentralized solid waste management. And uh, earlier it was a contractor-led program, uh, you know, with no processing, only dumping with very high cost. On the tipping fee it was benefiting the contractors with no treatment of the solid waste it was fully dependent on the contractors and the workers and now it is completely community led it is contractor free with community partnership 100 percent processing we produce mokoto and benefiting the urban local body the socha sati this the community volunteer there is no dependency on the external factors so five minutes and Yes, sir. I'm I, I'm Rashi. It's a hundred percent source segregation, decentralized processing, 
with the full community partnership following circular economy zero landfill we are not putting up any landfill there is no uh, uh, waste uh, unprocessed the current status is about we have we generate daily about 1900 metric ton we have already created about 196 micro composting centers and 170 micro, the material recovery facilities created a capacity of more than 1693 tons per day and the rest are under construction which will be able to do it in another three four months and the mokata which we produce the organic manure they are sold at rupees 20 per kg and government of odisha has ordered that all government departments agencies which use manure have to procure the urban uh, mokato at 20 rupees that has been a big support these are our the micro composting centers and the material recovery facilities and this is the economics of a, a, a one well center the cost analysis on the on the bottom you will find the total expenditure is about 69 lakh for a for a 30000 population we we have number of cities with 30000 average population with 7200 households the for for three for 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 managing the solid waste of that 30000 population one uh, uh, five tpd material compost the uh, micro composting center and uh, material recovery facility would be required and the cost requirement is the total expenditure comes to about 70 lakh and the revenue from that through the user fee collection through sale of recyclable waste through sale of the organic manure comes to about 1.554 per year and the profit or the surplus we generate out of this is about 84 lakh this is what we are achieving pan odisha i have just shown that as a sample one representative of a city and as i said for the fecal sludge management also we are following the decentralized community partnership basis into it was 2015 uh, bmgf organized a, uh, it was in 2016 bmgf organized a visit to malaysia along with the cpr mr shubhagata also was uh, part of that program where uh, you know we got the exposure to the fssm concept and we learned that customized and we uh, made a tailor made program for Bhuneshwar. and till that time we, we did not have any uh, sewer network program the first sewer uh, network was commissioned in 2015 covering only puri city that was about only 22 percent and now we uh, now the sewer network is implemented in four other large corporations which started much earlier after our malaysia visit we started doing only fsm and uh, now we started with the bmgf supported bmgf and cpr supported in deccanal and angul in 2016 immediately we leveraged the amrut funding and started in nine more towns and with the start with state funding we decided to do in all cities now in 2020 right and 2021 right now we have uh, uh, we have about uh, 45 plants now operational by december 2021 100 cities will be uh, will be having the septage plant we have a, a plan target to complete uh, a septage plants in all 114 cities by march 2022 2022 because several plants are under construction and we have also procured lots of cesspool vehicles of 3000 liters and for addressing the small lane narrow streets we procured 1000 liters liters also so the entire state is now serviced with the required number of cesspool vehicles and septage plants and by march 2022 as i said with 118 septage plant we would have created a capacity of 1425 kiloliters of treatment capacity per day no 2037 kiloliters of treatment capacity per day as against our requirement of 1425 kiloliters only for the entire uh, state population thus we will be creating about 612 kiloliters of surplus capacity which we intend to use for peri-urban and rural areas we have already taken up a convergence program with the rural areas so we engage the missions like the women's self-help group transgender group in the not only in the operating and management in management of the septage treatment plant but also in the entire sanitation liquid waste management value chain starting from the construction of toilet to the operation and maintenance of the community toilet public toilet windom of the cesspool vehicle and the windom of the septage plant you will find the transgender groups signing formal agreement contract agreement with the cities and with the implementation of the septage plant 
I must show this uh, to Mr. Shobhagat also. He'd be very happy to see. So this is the data we collected from the Odisha State Pollution Control Board. Every year they do the study of the river systems to 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 to, to study the the pollution level. This is the presence of the coliform in the river system. So you will find total coliform count. You will find in the Sambalpur Maha. This is the Mahanadi river system. How from every year the 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 percentage has come down drastically. The green is the 2015, and the extreme the the amber is 2012. So you can see the reduction in the Mahanadi River system. Here we have constructed these uh, the septage treatment plants. This is in Katak city where we have functional septage plants. You will you will find how the total coliform count has come down drastically over the years. And this is the Boneshwar upstream uh, Kuakai River near Boneshwar. How from 2018 onwards there is a sub, there is a substantial decrease. This is the again this is another stream in Boneshwar downstream Daya River. This is Baleshwar city where we have a functional septage plant. You will find how this how this has impacted the uh, contamination level. How it has positively reduced. So coming to the economics of operating a septage plant. This is the total expenditure of a typical 10 KLD plant for a city like Baleswar. You will find the total expenditure is about 25 lakh. Revenue, uh, revenue which we collect from the cesspool operation, uh, uh, we, we collect for every trip about uh, 500 to 1,000 rupees per uh, uh, trip. That is about 13 lakh. Deficit per annum comes to about 12 lakh. That means every month it's about one lakh and that one lakh also goes towards goes as wages to the women self-help groups which are operating this so uh, how do you manage funds capex and opex for uh, creating the uh, infrastructure as well as operating and maintaining this just forget about the leave alone the state funded schemes only from the finance commission grant 15th finance commission grant and the fifth state finance commission grant provides enough funding for the sanitation and water supply. I have taken up a, for a typical city with the 30,000 population, say Malkangiri or Talchar. So the annual grant available uh, for capex for, for capex as well as opex is about nine crore, whereas our requirement is only less than one point less than say two crore. So this is the economy, and uh, so far in the so far we have not, uh, you know, faced any problem relating to funding. Funding as I must be uh, grateful to government of Odisha for giving uh, the required funds for creating the water supply infrastructure as well as for the sanitation infrastructure. Another point is that since we are adopting the decentralized approach, the fund the capex requirement also is substantially low, and the OINDAM requirement also is substantially low. So, with this, I end my presentation. Thank, Thank you, so, you much. so much. Thank you so much. I exceeded my time, I think. Uh, no, sir, it was a race. So, <laughs> but it was we, running, have, actually. we have qualified. <laughs> But uh, uh, thank you so much. It it, it demonstrates uh, also to uh, people from outside that creativity kind of comes in bundles and uh, enthusiasm and boldness too. Uh, so uh, so means uh, not only is it uh, appropriate to to kind of look for financing solutions, uh, uh, but also to kind of uh, not only try and look at a couple of projects and make them stellar. Uh, but to work with the wider uh, problem too. Uh, so means I, uh, I mean there are lots of lessons for everyone uh, in this uh, business uh, to learn from Orissa. Thank you so much for this presentation. Uh, let's uh, now move to the panel discussion, and uh, I would first like to uh, invite uh, uh, Ms. Manvita Baradi uh, to, uh, to kind of step in at this stage and uh, tell us a bit from her experience. Uh, on what uh, service delivery uh, problems she has seen across the country uh, in the various states she works vis-a-vis -vis smaller cities and why is it that uh, the, the attention to smaller cities seem to be uh, to be weak at one stage and what does that uh, how does that impact the wider population 
uh, and the service providers themselves. Uh, uh, you have five minutes, Manvita. Thanks. Sure. Thanks, uh, Shupagato, and thanks, Moderate. Um, after uh, such a wonderful presentation by Mati, sir, it's always difficult to, you know, uh, match his uh, pace. Uh, I would uh, like to uh, highlight here that uh, the problems highlighted by him in 2016 is mostly a lot of cities in our country. We worked in many states, as you know, and uh, the, the understanding is similar. Highlight. I would like to highlight here one important point, however, is the capacity of city uh, staff to be able to match the pace which uh, the state or the central government is trying to make. Unfortunately, in our country, small and medium towns are a bit neglected. A lot of focus on the big, big towns. The way funding works is also biased towards the big towns. Smaller towns have hardly one city engineer or a person uh, looking at water sanitation. The person is also burdened to look at roads, etc. Now, as you, as we all know, water sanitation, though, is a big issue for the for the citizens. The visibility is less because it's underground. The roads and other infrastructure uh, uh, gets momentum and um, uh, the balance between the two sometimes get dwindled so one has to look at and how the capacity of the city staff to also keep the momentum going to address these issues it is not so complex or it's not uh, rocket science but it's still you know the last mile of understanding whether the infrastructure is uh, built and who is going to maintain is also a question because the state or the central funds don't cover the uh, funds for um, um, operation and maintenance. Cities have to rely on their own funds. Now, what happens because of our um, uh, poor quality, poor um, uh, collection efficiency of, of, of our cities, these funds, they don't have uh, own resources. And hence, the monies which can go into maintenance and operation is very, very limited. So I would highlight this as a big point, capacity of staff and uh, along with the problems of uh, looking at ONM from their own funds. The third important aspect I'd like to highlight is the quality. The qu sir uh, mentioned about how they have been able to do in Odisha. But what is happening is uh, the quality of uh, water supplied, because there are two ways. One, either you take the groundwater or the sur surface water. Now, surface water requires a lot of cleaning, uh, filtration, etc. Smaller towns don't have the capacity or uh, infrastructure to do that. They try. So one more mechanism was being tried where uh, we were working We can we do pooled uh, resources two three four cities together can form one filtration plant and can we really supply water uh, depending on the distance so that's another the other aspect is quality at the doorstep of the consumer now what happens is there the quality is not measured unfortunately though we have super rules and guidelines sops available for water quality but the regime of of uh, of measuring that is not set um the is for instance say within 15 days you need to do x test within uh, six months you have to do y certain tests are done every day now theoretically all engineers know but in practice in the governance and the management cycles of the cities unfortunately it it is not not happening and that was our big big concern and whether the public uh, the third thing, the public labs are not available. So we, when we were trying to even um, measure quality after gathering uh, the, the, the samples, the transportation of samples, we had to be so very careful. Like, you know, some temperature, otherwise E. coli, etc. would happen because labs are not available. The district towns would have it, small, smaller cities also uh, uh, are, uh, are are facing that problem. And hence, we don't have a cycle of getting the uh, test done regularly. So this is a huge uh, quality issue, which uh, at the consumer step. And the 
uh, fourth and a very important point is the inequity built into our system itself. Inequity of people in slum and slum-like communities not getting water, hardly sometimes 20 uh, LPCD, 40 LPCD versus larger cities are guzzlers of water. Where from though one, one uh, I mean, all our um, uh, guidelines suggest 150 to 135 LPCD is to be uh, delivered. The larger houses, the larger commercial establishments augment that supply with groundwater. Now, groundwater extraction is also a big question. So the inequity which is built into uh, uh, poor households and the and the better off households is huge, and that burden. Uh, city government is not being able to do. So my urge to this panel and maybe further discussions we can have, I know I have limited time, is how do we bring focus to city governments and getting autonomy capacity of the city governments to do the needful. Whether it's this government or that government, it does not matter. What matters is the last person on the street should get, get basic services uh, to the uh, to themselves, and that is uh, becoming a big, big issue. I think I'll end here for now. Thank you, Shubhanka. Thank you very much, Banvita, uh, for uh, putting together the key issues around uh, service delivery and financing, uh, and the chicken and egg situation, or whether you should invest first and and then uh, develop a service model, or whether a service model is important right from the beginning as well as the issue of capacities that you mentioned. I'll now I'd like to go to Mr. Ramakrishna Paul uh, to ask him to uh, uh, look into uh, the points that came out of his study of the six cities in the region uh, and to highlight some of the more important innovations that he saw in uh, project and municipal finance in water and sanitation in these small towns. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Shubhagato. And also going back to, I mean, like, I would like to highlight a couple of examples over here and taking references from two of the towns that we have looked into. Uh, but also going back to Mathi sir's uh, talk about uh, what the state of Orisha has been doing. Um, and one of the towns that we looked into was Dhenkanal uh, in Orisha. Uh, and some one of the key things, I mean, like, uh, we did talk about, uh, I think uh, Manvita ji also mentioned that uh, and also Mati Sarit's presentation was very clear to say that uh, towns, particularly smaller towns, they have issues with respect to financing the capital infrastructure. I mean, like the operational expenditure is something that the towns can still be able to manage to uh, uh, manage to generate from their own source revenues. And that is something also we have looked into across this, uh, across the smaller towns that we have studied. Uh, and uh, I want to just highlight one key thing over here that user fees are not the only financing mechanisms available to the smaller towns. Um, I mean, like there are several other mechanisms to generate revenue from sanitation and can be ring fenced for sanitation uh, if you're talking about uh, and that will help the smaller towns to sustain their at least their operational expenditure. Uh, taking the example of Dhenkanal, uh, Mathi sir mentioned about uh, the Mohato program and how that is helping the uh, towns to generate uh, like uh, towns to co-compose the solid waste along with the fecal sludge from the FSTP. Uh, and then the compost, I mean, like, and then the state having a government order uh, in place, which allows the municipalities to sell the uh, compost, at least what is happening in the case of the Hinkanal is the town is selling the compost to the state forest department. Uh, and the forest department is using the compost for non-food bearing uh, trees. Uh, and that is another additional source of revenue in addition to the user fees. Uh, in addition to this, there are uh, alternate other sources of uh, revenues as well for the town, like the uh, revenue coming from the public toilets. Uh, FS the FSTP in Dhenkanal has recently been commi like uh, commissioned to accept uh, fecal sludge from the 17 nearby villages as well. That is also adding to increasing the revenue uh, structure uh, uh, for the town. And all of these things bundled together helps the town to achieve or have multiple revenue streams to sustain its operational expenditure. Uh, one other example that I would like to take from uh, one of the other towns we studied in Bangladesh, uh, which is Janaida in Bangladesh. And the town has similarly that the town is also implementing multiple revenue streams uh, for from sanitation to generate revenue from sanitation. Uh, and uh, that includes the user fees. The town is also living. 
uh, sanitation tax uh, which has been implemented by the town uh, and the sanitation tax is uh, is implemented as a part of the property tax which is collected from the households uh, so it's like 12% of the property tax for institutional uh, establishments and 5% of the property tax for residential buildings is charged as property tax uh, and in addition to the property tax and the user fees collected from the uh, from the uh, households the town is also implementing an uh, annual registration fee so the registration fee is for emptying services as well uh, so the household essentially pays the uh, the the household pays the user fees uh, they pay the annual registration fee which is valid for one year uh, as well as they also pay the sanitation tax to the uh, to the municipality and the municipality is using this uh, all these three sources of revenue for uh, different objectives. They have different objectives to implement these. Uh, so the and registration fee and the user fee is utilized for maintaining or meeting the operational expenses for the town. Whereas the sanitation fees, the town is allocating and saving it for any future capital infrastructure investments. Uh, so, and the town, uh, one key thing I would like to draw here, and these are a couple of examples which focuses or reinforces the fact that multiple revenue streams can be implemented at a town level uh, to sustain the operational expenses. But two other uh, contextual uh, things that I would like to share over here is, uh, it is very important to have the, uh, um, have the uh, enabling ecosystem levers in place in order for all of these interventions to sustain. Uh, be it the example of the state government order passed in Orisha to sustain the or allow the municipalities to sell the compost to the state, uh, the state forest department. Or in the case of uh, Jenaida as well, I mentioned about three different uh, different uh, sources of uh, fee structure or taxes, uh, which are implemented for the same service. Now, there were a lot of chances to have a retaliation or uh, a, a willingness or lack of willingness to accept or to willingness to pay from the households as well, uh, because the households are eventually paying uh, three different types of uh, uh, tariff systems uh, in, in a way uh, for the same service. But then that was coupled by a lot of different capacity building and uh, behavior change campaigns. Uh, there was uh, the town was uh, able to implement uh, uh, like the block desludging. They were the town was the mayor had to go to the uh, blocks like the blocks mean the wards of the city and have block desludging services campaigns. Uh, there was uh, it was also like ward level consultations were very critical to uh, get a demand or create a demand for these surging services. So I think all of these levers act together in order to uh, like did act together for these couple of towns examples that I mentioned. Uh, and that, that's that's one thing that came out very clearly from the study that uh, it is not the towns need not depend on only user fees as the only revenue mechanism. Um, yeah, and I would like to uh, hand, uh, like, yeah, Shubhagato, like, we can share more examples and some other um, uh, topics as well. Uh, but I think that's one of the key learnings that we have seen. Thank you very much, Ram. That's very useful to, uh, to know that uh, creatively, uh, if local bodies are allowed to innovate around the uh, uh, maintenance of this infrastructure, they, they do come up with very interesting solutions. Uh, so that's uh, very good to hear. I'll now like to go on to um, uh, Mr. Nasser Ahmed and ask him to reflect a bit on the study that he has done uh, with uh, Amulya and what, which Amulya uh, highlighted uh, to tell us a bit about how he sees the space of uh, public finance for water and sanitation uh, across larger and uh, smaller cities across the five or six states that you have studied. Uh, how does he? What are the main constraints that he sees, and whether there are any particular states he wants to mention about approaches that they have adopted? Mr. Yeah, uh, thank you, uh, Shwagato sir. Uh, main constraint is uh, the these ULBs. The the ULBs are the main agencies, main vehicle, uh, which are actually executing the programs on uh, water and sanitation. And these ULBs, as uh, uh, Mulya also shown in one of the one of our slides, these ULBs are heavily dependent on the intergovernmental transfers to them uh, from the central government as well as the state government. Uh, so uh, they don't. Uh, they the 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 big big cities, the corporations in big cities have their uh, good share uh, in their total in revenue of their own revenue. 
but uh, this small town you will be is uh, medium town you will be is are mostly dependent on um, on the intergovernmental uh, transfers and these intergovernmental transfers depend on how the state is allocating to the uh, uh, water and sanitation and to the urban development which uh, in the states where uh, uh, where um, we studied uh, seem to have increased in uh, in last few years except for chatisgarh uh, where it it has uh, kind of stagnated uh, so 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 it's totally dependent on that second thing i would like to highlight is that three out of the six states uh, provide very detailed information on the transfer going towards the local bodies both rural and urban and in those three states you are able able to see how much is going to uh, big cities the corporations and how much is going to the what share is going to the medium towns that is municipal uh, municipal councils or the small towns that is uh, municipality and there we saw that in these three states which are bihar uh, madhya pradesh and chatisgarh where these statements are available the uh, the share of a small town uh, ulbs in the total transfer to the ulbs to the all the ulbs for rural for urban development as well as water and sanitation is sort of fluctuating over the years it's not showing a very clear trend but one clear trend we could see is that it's it's it has declined in the states where the the share was higher earlier like in bihar uh, or in chatisgarh where the share was uh, high uh, for the small towns it has now increased in recent year it has now declined in recent years uh, sorry it has not increased it has declined in recent years uh, but we also have to keep in mind that in bihar for example the level of urbanization itself is very low and most of the towns are small and medium towns not the big cities even the, their big cities uh, in bihar like uh, say for uh, where there is a corporation has been uh, incorporated is uh, created is also kind of a small town like ara or gaya where we, where we have uh, corporation uh, where, where we have corporations uh, already so 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 this we have to keep in mind uh, as far as which state to mention it is uh, it is uh, be, because we for odisha we don't have this uh data on transfer to the ulb is very clearly uh in their budget documents uh, but the, in terms of schemes there are as we heard there are some innovative schemes in uh, in odisha there is also a scheme which i would like to mention for the um, safai karmcharis for the sanitation workers uh, for their safety and dignity which uh, mentioning in itself is very important uh, i would like to say and this uh, sat nishchay yojana of bihar though its implementation has lots of issues or uh, this uh, uh, drink from tap of odisha which we heard uh, in in the presentation from uh, the odisha uh, these these are some some of the schemes which are worth uh, mentioning uh, i would also like to say that the as far as the uh, problems are concerned as i said in beginning that uh, the transfer for uh, the allocation for urban uh, urban development as well as water and sanitation showing increasing trend but there is one catch there that there is always the actual expenditure is less than the budgeted amount so budget allocation is higher but actual expenditure is lower so there will be a, an increasing trend in both but but the but the departments department of urban development department and the ulbs are not able to utilize the total money they have on their disposal and there could be various reasons one of the reasons is lack of staff vacant posts another reason is most of these small towns are newly created ulbs they were earlier panchayat but most or major i mean a significant number of them are newly created ulbs they were earlier panchayats and they they lack capacities and they lack you know trained professional staff the vacant there are vacant posts and those the the people already who are there they are not you know trained or they are not they have not dealt in this this towns are having increased population now so they have not dealt in that last point i would like to mention is uh, this uh, uh, lack of focus in urban planning uh, though i i i won't be able to quote anything in in this regard but lack of focus in urban planning on this natural water bodies and natural um, water flows 
and that creates a lot of problem in terms of sanitation quality of water and uh, and, uh, and 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 generally health health situation and environmental situation in the cities as well and towns as well uh, so i would like to i think i would take thank, thank you very much thank you very much mr nisar uh, I'll, uh, I'll just now, uh, me, me now go on to Miss, uh, Mr. Deepak Sanan. Uh, Deepak, since you heard all of this, uh, from your long uh, uh, understanding and studies of, uh, of uh, finance uh, in the country, public finance in the country, looking, looking at incentives uh, for getting uh, local bodies and state governments to, to innovate on their own, uh, what, uh, what is the current thinking? What, uh, what uh, means? Uh, what, what, what would you suggest from a little, let's say, more macro perspective, uh, away from the city, away from the state at the national level? Uh, means have have the finance commissions and state finance commissions uh, role increased or decreased? Uh, it will be lovely to hear some comments in uh, to bring in the larger public finance. Uh, architecture story into this too. So Shubhagato, we must remember one. What we are debating here is that water and sanitation both don't require rocket science for solutions. The solutions are available. Some sporadic locations seem to be making headway. But overall, we seem to be mired in terrible outcomes across this country in both water and sanitation or a variety of areas. What is, and the root doesn't lie in my view, in lack of money. It's not the fact that everyone is dependent on intergovernmental transfers, which is the problem. The problem is the nature of the intergovernmental transfers, in my view. I have for many years, as you know, held this view that if we really analyze the nature of our intergovernmental transfers, we and seek to do something about it, that's where we could start really making headway in reaching what uh, Manvita said, requirement of autonomy for cities and capacity for cities to address their problems. Until we really look at our intergovernmental transfer system critically and analyze it, we are not going to make headway. And what is it that is really bothering us in this? I think. I would like to mention two things here, one for water and the other for sanitation. Water is a private good for which there is a demand. Everybody wants more water, good quality water to reach their homes. And yet we have for over the decades set targets, seemingly achieved a fair amount of the targets and then come. This has been the story in rural and will, in my view, become increasingly the story in urban, where we are now targeting universal coverages. In rural, we've seen it happen for 40 years plus, 50 years now. What is the issue here is that our, you must remember that India's intergovernmental transfer system encompasses roughly 30% plus of specific purpose transfers or conditional transfers what we call centrally sponsored schemes, or even central schemes which give money to the states. These specific, in no other country in the world, in no other federal country in the world, are specific purpose transfers of this scale. It's usually about 1% or so. Because the whole idea is that these are lower level subjects should be dealt with at lower levels of government and not by national governments or even by state governments when they belong to by principles of subsidiarity, the subject belongs to a lower level. However, we have created this wonderful system of, of centrally sponsored schemes. And the key problem here is that in water, for example, we've created infrastructure-based schemes which generate what I call a BNR syndrome, which has been called, not me, others have called it even before me. And BNR here stands for Build, Neglect, Rebuild. Basically, what we we are telling the, uh, the center is telling the states is if you are able to show need, you will get money. In effect, 
implicitly the message is if you show sustainable service you will get less money to give you a very simple example when the pradhan mantri gram sadak yojana was launched 2022 years ago for the first time kerala got the least money in india because it had the biggest network of rural roads in other words our centrally sponsored schemes basically say if you are doing something well then we'll give you less money and this is very true in water as me for decades so when you are saying that if you perform very well you are unlikely to get fresh money you are actually creating an incentive not to show sustainable delivery and this be uh, demonstrated in that study we did of rural water across india to show how uh, states are actually showing a need for water uh, schemes for, for uh, that there is shortage of meeting the norms for water supply in habitations even when there is no reason why they should have this shortage because the money lies in new schemes not in a sustainable delivery of the water in sanitation we have an additional problem not only is there is this whole uh, issue of infrastructure driven schemes we have a problem that this is a public good for which the demand is lacking the real demand for really safe disposal is lacking still in india there is a demand for getting it out of my backyard but the key concept of really getting safe disposal is still very much lacking in india so how do we uh, really go about getting beyond this this uh, sort of catch 22 which we have created where you you keep chasing targets you keep achieving and you have to keep showing more need to be able to get fresh money how do we get out of this how do we reach what manvita said cities which are autonomous which are thinking for themselves which own these functions and have the capacity to deliver them there are no short answers there are no shortcuts here there there, there is uh, only uh, an issue that somehow we have to get to an understanding that these are requirements i would suspect that one model for doing this is pick up from what was advocated in the national urban sanitation policy when it advocated sort of state le national level action state level action city level action for creating a movement for urban sanitation and achieving that uh, we need to think of really good situation analysis which are able to generate the messages and the data which bring up the need for better sanitation which bring up and demonstrate in each city and locality what say a good shit flow diagram will show that how poor are your outcomes and how much health hazard and how much health expenditure these are causing once i can start demonstrating these things maybe i can create a feeling in the city that i need to do something or in the town that i need to do something about it once i can do that i can generate action plans which are able to match the kind of money i have available to achieve the kind of solution which is possible will this happen i think it will be sporadic it will be non sustainable in india till the overall architecture of intergovernmental transfers is really sorted out so i i really wish good luck to mathi vatanan who i really admire the kind of work he's been doing over the years whether it's with jaga mission which is and now with water and sanitation he's a committed guy he's passionate but i've spent enough years in this system to say i don't know how sustainable are these one time infusions of capital in for infrastructure until we get a real feeling in the cities and an autonomy in the cities to really understand their own problems and say we need to tackle them and we will go on further and do something about it and we'll not be begging for capacity of funds from the state level i don't know if we can achieve that with our current architecture uh, thanks deepak for uh, bringing to fore uh, some of the inherent weaknesses of the uh, of the way india has been approaching this issue uh, uh, mr mathivatan i guess has had to leave 
so but there were a few questions for him uh, but i i also wanted to uh, kind of um, uh, look at orissa from the, this perspective itself uh, wherein uh, you know decentralization as a big bang uh, also did not work in india right uh, deepak so uh, uh, means this incremental way of decentralizing uh, by providing more investment and projects in 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 local areas where uh, some of these innovations are happening uh, is there uh, is there some comment on, on on whether that process can be incentivized because i do see for example orissa was a leader in bringing in fsm uh, to India as a formal system. Uh, but however, as Swachh Bharat 2 focuses now on uh, more treatment, uh, it seems to be at a disadvantage that it has already covered all its 114 towns with, uh, uh, with their own resources. Uh, so as the uh, center opens its purse for smaller and medium towns in, in let's say, the waste management sector, uh, Orissa has already uh, done much of that. So, so, so I completely agree with you that there are, uh, uh, you know, these concerns. How how would one address it before uh, I go back to the other panelists? Uh, to you, Deepak. You're on mute, Deepak. Sorry. So I have no short answers for you, Shubhagatu. These are difficult questions. As you rightly said, here, Odisha is demonstrating today exactly what I quoted for rural roads from, from, from Kerala. And, uh, you know, I can quote from my own state of Himachal, where we, we did uh, this phenomenal rural sanitation uh, success with no subsidies being paid uh, uh, and got, you know, reached 90% plus households with zero subsidy payment. And government of India said, we'll not give you the money to reward communities because this must be given to individual beneficiaries. So immediately Himachal Pradesh, with a change of government, retracted its approach and said, we are going back to giving subsidies. And that last 10%, last mile of 10% sanitation coverage in rural has never been achieved. So you'll, you'll keep falling back on this until, as I said, there is a consciousness, and this is not easy to bring about, at the central level, that this is not about inputs and not about prescriptions from Delhi. This is about ownership at the local level for certain functions and outcomes and reward those outcomes, recognize those outcomes. Do not keep rewarding, uh, in, uh, giving money for inputs and prescriptions and let money become a way of just recognizing and rewarding what has occurred. Have credible systems for measuring outcomes and reward those outcomes, and you will be in the whole country. Without that, you'll keep chasing the same mirage of, of sure. something which seems to be taking off and then right. Right, slip right. back, as they say. Right. So, uh, means if I uh, if I can bring Manvita and Nasser also uh, into this uh, discussion, uh, means uh, uh, means in your in your studies and your practice, uh, did you uh, means have you uh, means where would you lie on this debate of this uh, recycling of inequalities and recycling of new investments uh, alongside it? Uh, Manvita, you want to address the issue first? Yeah, uh, before that, I'll just respond to um, uh, Deepak Ji. One, he mentioned about measurement and data collection and then making decisions based on that. Uh, fortunately, it did happen uh, post-urban um, uh, sanitation policy in 2009, etc. And a regime of measuring, uh, etc. started. Unfortunately, the, the color uh, changed uh, to measuring and making decisions out of it to ranking and competition. If it had been a healthy competition, it's fine. But if you had uh, fudging data and uh, showing uh, uh, the wrong picture, which unfortunately some of our governments are uh, kind of, you know, putting uh, that across to us, we are 
we are putting um, sand in our own eyes. It's just not appropriate to do that. The idea was to show a real mirror, um, mirror to yourself, like where you are standing. So that's a big problem. Coming to Shubhagatos, your question about uh, whether urban development, um, uh, we, are, we are financial, I guess that was your question, right? Uh, financially, how our small and medium towns are doing with with uh, water sanitation uh, um, uh, uh, projects is there is a there is a disparity. Uh, larger cities do uh, take away more attention because uh, if you say uh, most population live in those large cities. So my example is we worked in 170 cities of Gujarat and many others. But if I take this example, uh, the four large towns uh, have. 60 plus population of the state so the the state's me uh, mechanisms attention is to provide more to that 60 percent but the smaller towns which are lacking like getting water uh once in three days or 20 minutes a day is they're, they're not paying attention to that because of obvious reasons that you know your larger population is recovered but then that gets into a spiral. If I want to build a house, I'll rather not build into a smaller city, but I would somehow put my resources together and have a house uh, somewhere. So people do move to larger cities where there are then uh, better services. So this dis uh, disparity is uh, uh, difficult to manage. However, if we de-link our basic services to land issues we we can have some strides and then there is a positive uh, uh, light at the tunnel where some of our cities in gujarat also has uh, looked at uh, delinking whether you own your land or not but you're still entitled to get basic services like water and sanitation so this could be a way forward i'll end here for now uh, sure uh, thanks uh, 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 mr nisar You, you want you want to respond to this uh, ongoing um, uh, debate around uh, services and financing, uh, incentives and financing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would um, I would like to say uh, about this. I would like to say that see uh, uh, the the ULBs and even local bodies are. Uh, uh, they, they would remain dependent on the intergovernmental transfers. That is one thing given because the way uh, revenue uh, powers have been assigned to all three levels of governance in the country, the government, the state government, and the local local governments. So the the so in in that sense, because they have least power to uh, impose revenues. They are dependent more on the state, the governments which are of them, like the state government and union government. So that has to happen. But in in that in in that we had given uh, parameter, the the ways of allocations are set by the finance commissions. How much will be given to which state and uh, and what will be the rule of uh, distribution of the transfers? And there we they and, and there generally these things come to to be discussed that how who are we rewarding the um, the incompetence or are we rewarding those who have not proved their situation these things are discussed but we have to keep in mind also the equity aspect. And that, like looking at that, we have to, I mean, there has to be a balance between efficiency and equity aspects. So we cannot say that those who are not doing well are being rewarded. Uh, in that sense, it's not very clear. Uh, I mean, it's not very black and white. So that I have to say, because this non-performance is also a result of so many other factors. So it has to be kept in mind. Right. Uh, thanks. Uh, I I uh, mean uh, the, the only uh, thing I w uh, want to also add to this discussion is that uh, means uh, if one was to take the equity perspective uh, and the lack of you know means as as India urbanizes and this space becomes wider and 
you know, as Indian villages also densify and get more uh, infrastructure uh, heavy or, um, or the need for infrastructure heavy, uh, the tran these transition spaces require uh, some sort of attention. Means I uh, means it might be time where uh, the larger million plus cities need no uh, should not get any other support uh, anymore going forward. And I think that will uh, hard budget constraint as we call it for larger cities itself will improve uh, services in larger cities. Uh, but in in the medium term, uh, what what uh, one of the key features of um, uh, my own past work with uh, the Orissa government and Mr. Matiwatan has, has kind of shown us that as we deliver some of these projects in lower capacity U ULBs, strengths are built. So, so uh, means decentralization, uh, they, uh, whether it's sustained over a period of time in this kind of a framework, whether uh, uh, where it seems to be centralizing in government policy in general, uh, I'm not very sure. But um, uh, means every time you do a new project, most of these cities had nothing of, of in terms of their own assets other than the building in which they were housed uh, before these water and sanitation projects came to them. Right, so there was nothing that they owned. Now that they are getting some of these assets, they're uh, finding, as Ram mentioned, some innovative solutions around them. Some cities are, of course, doing better than the others. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, means we've been working with donor resources and not government resources directly. So that's also playing a role, right? With advisors uh, managing to play uh, uh, some role uh, as these decentralization processes happen. Uh, but, uh, but institutionally, I, I'm not very sure uh, uh, that it's going to be perpetually um, uh, viable for governments to be, re, uh, you know, uh, doing what you said, uh, Deepak, again, the uh, uh, build and uh, refurbish and uh, again. Uh, so, uh, so I uh, means, uh, mean, you see this in the mo in what in the in the world, the Western world, where modernization kind of uh, happened uh, sometime earlier. Uh, that uh, means in the UK, for example, much of the expenses on water and sanitation are actually now for uh, for upgrading services uh, and our uh, service uh, are on uh, service fees, right? Uh, so when much of the urbanization is done away with, means they aren't growing urban so fast anymore, there is this whole, uh, means, uh, uh, let's say in the construction industry, New housing construction is just 20% of the revenues of the construction industry in many of the uh, uh, countries which have stable urban um, um, systems. So, uh, so one, uh, I means I, I, I think I'm going to have to call this to a close at this stage, uh, but just uh, uh, need to kind of uh, leave with everyone that how long uh, can India afford uh, to not give right authority at the right level and to be continuously uh, refurbishing its infrastructure. Uh, let's hope that Orissa is of the new generation uh, when some of these constraints relax on government and that uh, because uh, the initiative that Orissa also showed was in spite of what the government of India was funding, which was in the smart cities program, in larger Amrut schemes, which other state governments use to do pipe water schemes, uh, sewerage schemes, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Uh, they did uh, do a set of those innovations. Let's hope that there is uptake of that. Uh, what the circumstances will be in support of it, we are yet to be get a proper understanding of. But I want to thank each and every panelist for uh, for sparing the time today uh, for giving us. Uh, their perspective and uh, making this such an engaged discussion. I uh, want to thank both the presenters, uh, Amulya and Mr. Matthew Atnan, uh, for, uh, for, uh, for taking us through all the uh, research uh, that surrounds this currently and the practice that has been happening on the ground. Uh, I thank WaterAid and, uh, um, and um, uh, the Natch Foundation again for uh, giving us this opportunity to talk about this, uh, this thing. There are a number of questions uh, from the audience, uh, which we didn't get to answer, uh, very specific ones. 
much of them addressed to Mr. Matthew Atan. I um, so I, we, uh, he had to leave in advance. So uh, with that, I think we should call this to a close because we are very much at the edge of our time. Thank you so much. But this will be an ongoing you. conversation, and hope to see you on one of these other conversations on this topic uh, as we as India moves forward. Thanks so much. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Thank Bye. You. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Sir. Thank you. Thank you all.